So I recently switched from iTerm2 to Alacrity for a minimal and fast terminal setup on my Mac. Though iTerm2 is great, there's a lot of features that it has that I don't actually use. And I really like how fast and simple Alacrity is and that it's also cross-platform so you can also use it on a Linux machine. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to set it up to take the terminal on your Mac from this to this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is open up the default Mac terminal. I'm gonna use command space and look for terminal and press enter. For this setup, I'm gonna be using ZSH. You can check if you're using ZSH by doing echo and dollar sign zero. This is the current default for Mac OS. Now the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to install the homebrew package manager, which we'll be using to install everything that we need for the setup. You can run the following command to install homebrew. You can find this command as well as everything else I'm gonna be showing you in the blog post linked in the description and then wait until Homebrew finishes installing. Now you also need to add Homebrew to your path. To do this, you can run the following command. This will add the necessary line to .c profile, and then you can do source tilde slash dot z profile. And now you can check if you can use Homebrew by doing brew dash dash version. Awesome. Now the next thing we're gonna do is to install Alacrity. To do this, you can do brew install dash dash cask Alacrity. And then I'm gonna open up Alacrity with the command space and look for Alacrity. Now if you get this error, click on okay, then do command space, look for security and privacy. Then go down and over here it says Alacrity was blocked, click on open anyway, and then click on open, perfect. Now we'll install git. To do that, you can do brew install git. And then we're going to install a nerd font so that we can get some really nice icons to show up in the terminal. You can do brew tap homebrew slash cask dash fonts. And then do brew install font meslo lg nerd font. This will go ahead and install meslo nerd font, which is the nerd font that I personally use. Then we're gonna create a directory to configure Alacrity. We're gonna do make dir dash p tilde slash dot config slash Alacrity. Then we're going to cd into this directory like so. And then I'm gonna create a file by doing touch alacrity.toml. This is where we can set up all of the options. And I'm gonna open up the config file with my editor of choice. I like to use NeoVim, so I'm gonna do nvim alacrity.toml. You could also open it up with text edit by doing open a and the name of the application, text edit and alacrity.toml. Or if you have VS Code installed, you can do code alacrity.toml and that'll open it up in VS Code. All right, I'm gonna open it up with NeoVim like so. And then the first thing I'm gonna do is to make changes to the window. To do this, you can add a table called window and inside add padding.x to set padding in the left and right edges. I'm gonna set this to 10 and then do dot y and set it to 10 as well for the top and bottom. If you save this, Alacrity will automatically reload. I'm also gonna change the decorations option to buttonless like so. I've saved this, but to see this change, we have to restart Alacrity. You can also change the opacity by doing something like this, setting opacity to 0 0.8, for example. Save this. If I exit out of NeoVim, you can see that better. I'm gonna open it back up like so. You can also add some blur by setting blur to true and then save this. If I close NeoVim, you'll see now that the terminal has some transparency as well as some background blur. I'm gonna go ahead and close Alacrity. Now I've opened it up again and you'll see that the buttonless option removes the buttons on the top of the window for a more minimal look. I'm gonna go back to dot config slash Alacrity and open alacrity.toml again. The next thing I wanna do is to set option as alt 
and we can set this to both so that both of my option keys act as alt keys within alacrity. This is useful for keyboard shortcuts inside the terminal. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is add a new table called font and in here I'm gonna do normal dot family to set the font to the nerd font that we installed. This is gonna be Meslo LGS nerd font mono. And you can also set the size here to something like 19, for example. And I'm gonna save. You'll see now that in my NeoVim window, some of these symbols that weren't showing up because I didn't have the right font are now working properly. Now I use Tmux to manage my terminal sessions and work with panes and windows. And for colors to work properly with it, I need to go to the top here. I'm gonna add another table called env for environment variables. I'm gonna set term equal to x term 256 color and save. Now I can close this. And the next thing I'm going to do is to install my theme for Alacrity. I'm going to be using power level 10k. I'm going to do brew install power level 10k. I used to set all this up with oh my ZSH, but it's honestly overkill for what I need and it can slow down the terminal. So I'm gonna do all the setup manually to keep it pretty simple and minimal. Now I'm gonna run the following command. This will add a line to .cshrc to set up power level 10k as your theme. And then we can reload this file by doing source tilde slash .cshrc. And that will open up the power level 10k configuration wizard. Now I can answer why for yes, this looks like a diamond. Why again, why again, why again, everything looks good. And now you can choose the style that you are gonna wanna use. I've lately been using the lean style, so I'm gonna do one. I'm gonna go for Unicode, which is one. For the colors, I'm gonna do two for eight colors. I do wanna show the current time in 12 hour format. So one, I'm gonna do two lines. I like dotted, so two. Left frame, so two. Black for the frame color. This will look better in a little bit. Two for sparse. And two for many icons. One for concise. And I don't really want the transient prompts. I'm gonna do N for no, and do one for verbose. Finally, for the last question, answer Y for yes. And Y for yes again. Awesome, so everything's looking pretty cool. If you ever wanna open up the configuration wizard for power level 10K manually, you can do P10K configure and press enter and then go through it. I'm gonna do Q to quit this. Now I'm gonna show you guys how to set up the colors for your power level 10K theme. We're gonna clone a GitHub repository that has a bunch of different Alacrity themes by doing git clone. This is the repository. I'm gonna go under code and copy this URL and then paste it in here. And I want the directory on my computer to be called themes. Now if I do ls, you'll see that we have a themes directory. And now I've put together my own theme for Alacrity that is inspired from my iTerm2 theme called Cool Night. To add it to the themes folder, you can run the following command. Again, you can find this in the blog post. Now again, I'm gonna open up the alacrity.toml file. And then to the top, I'm gonna add an import key equal to an array. And in here, we're gonna do tilde slash dot config slash alacrity slash themes slash themes again, and then you can specify which theme you want to use. You can head over to the repository to see an example of the colors here for each of the different themes. I'm just gonna go ahead and use mine. It's called Cool Night. I'm gonna save this, and now the theme has been applied. I'm gonna close NeoVim so you guys can see it. Now you'll notice if you use the rainbow configuration for power level 10K, the background color for the directory you're currently in doesn't look very good. What I recommend you do is open up tilde slash dot p10k.zsh. I'm opening it up with NeoVim, use the editor you prefer, and then look for 9k underscore dir underscore background. And then you're gonna change this variable here to zero so that it uses the black color in your color scheme. And then I'm gonna close NeoVim and then you can do a source tilde slash dot p10k dot zsh. There you go, I think that looks a lot nicer.
Now the next thing I'm gonna do is set up completion. There's two different things I wanna do here. The first thing is to set up better completion when you're using the up and down arrow keys to go through the history. To do this, I'm gonna do nvim tilde slash dot zshrc to open up the zshrc file with neovim. And then at the bottom, I'm gonna add the following. This will set up a file where zsh will store our history. And this will set up some options for how zsh will go about saving the history to that file. Now I'm gonna save this close NeoVim and then what I recommend you do is to do cat dash V and press enter to see the codes that the terminal sends when you press on a given key press on your up arrow and then your down arrow so these are the two that you need let's do control C I'm just gonna copy these and open up the ZSHRC file again go to the bottom I'm just gonna paste these in and then you can do bind key and I'm going to Take the first one and use that. This is the up arrow. It's gonna be history search backward. And then take the other one and do bind key, paste that and do history search forward. I'm gonna save this and then close this file. And I'm gonna reload the configuration by doing source till the slash dot zshrc. Now, for example, if I do nvim and then use the up arrow, It'll go through the commands that I used previously when I used nvim. If I use the down arrow, it'll go backwards. Now I also want to install ZSH auto suggestions, which is a really nice plugin as well. We can do brew install ZSH dash auto suggestions. Now you can run the following command, which you'll find in the blog post to add the line that we need to ZSHRC to enable this and then do source tilde slash dot zshrc. Let's do so for example, I'm gonna get a suggestion to source zshrc and to accept it, you can use the right arrow. Now I also wanna add zsh syntax highlighting, which is a nice way to highlight your commands. We're gonna do brew install zsh syntax dash highlighting. And then run the following command, which you can also find in the blog post to add the line that we need in ZSHRC. Now again, reload the configuration with source tilde slash dot ZSHRC. And now for example, if I start typing out source, it'll start out red, but once I get to source, it turns green because now the command is correct. Now there's some other really cool tools that I've been using lately with my terminal. I made a whole video on this recently, which I'll have linked in the description. Right now I'm just gonna install two of the ones that I showed in that other video. The first is called EZA, it's a better LS. I'm gonna do brew install EZA. And then I'm gonna open up the ZSHRC file with NeoVim, go to the bottom, and I'm gonna add the following line to set up an alias for LS with a bunch of different options here. You can copy this from my blog post. I'm gonna save and quit and reload the configuration like so. And now if I do LS, it has some pretty nice highlighting. And the other tool I'm gonna install is a better CD called Zoxide. I'm gonna do brew install Zoxide. Again, open up the ZSHRC file like so. Go to the bottom and I'm gonna add the following two lines. This will set up an alias for CD to use Zoxide instead. And this will help us enable and set up Zoxide. Let's save and quit. Again, reload our configuration like so. And now I can use CD with the better Zoxide functionality if I move over to a given directory. For example, I have the repository for my blog. This is located in tilde slash dev slash YouTube slash svelte kit dash blog. Now that I've gone to this directory, Zoxide will remember this. And if I move somewhere else, let's say I go to my home directory with CD and enter. Now if I just type out a portion of the name of the directory I wanna go to, let's say I do CD spelt and press enter, with Zoxide it will automatically go back to the directory I visited. It's really awesome. So you guys can see a better example of the better highlighting with EZA. Let's do LS here. And this is how it'll look like. Now finally, as I mentioned, I use tmux for all of my windows and panes. I'm gonna install it by doing brew install tmux. 
and I have a full video on how I set up and use Tmux. I'll have that linked in the description. For this video, I'm just going to download my Tmux configuration using curl. I'm gonna use the following command and the configuration is gonna be located in my home directory and it's called .tmux.conf. I'm gonna press enter. Now for true colors to work in NeoVim, we need the term environment variable to be correct. I'm gonna do echo dollar sign term. It shouldn't be alacrity. We already fixed this, but we need to close alacrity. Now I'm gonna do echo dollar sign term. That's correct now. Now I'm gonna start Tmux by doing Tmux and press enter. And now in my setup, I can do control A and capital I. This will install all of the plugins that I'm using with Tmux. If the status line isn't working properly, you might need to get a newer version of bash. You can do this with brew install bash and then do control A and R to reload the Tmux configuration. With my setup, you can do control A and pipe to create a vertical split, control A and dash to create a horizontal split, and you can do control H to go to the left, control L to go to the right, control K to go up, and control J to go down. Again, to dive a lot deeper into how to use Tmux, check out my dedicated video on that. All right, you guys, that's it for this video. If you're interested in taking this to the next level, check out this video that I made recently on how to set up seven amazing command line tools that are really helpful when working on the terminal. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like down below. Let me know in the comment section if you have any questions or feedback for me. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click on the bell to stay up to date with more content like this from me. See you guys in the next one. Peace.